Welcome back to Switzer and Australia's Business Channel. Now, few of us enjoy our stock market losing close to 10%. But is this creating a buying opportunity for those who are investing for the long term? Tim Samway is the CEO of Hyperion Asset Management. So how is he reacting to the recent market negativity? All right, Tim, I've got to warn you, I'm aggressive tonight. Oh, All right, so are you scared, us. Tim? No. I knew you'd say that. <laughs> you what? or the market? No, I'm scared of my viewers who think I'm not you know, being scared enough. I, I still believe the market can rebound before Christmas. But what are you thinking? When you're seeing this now, the first leg down felt like it was currency driven. Yeah. All right? And now the Yanks are getting a little bit negative as well. Mm. But are you, are you just saying to yourself, well, thank God I can now buy stocks I like at lower prices? Opportunity knocks. Yeah. I mean, we've got stocks that... We'd rather they went through, you know, $45 stock went through 35 on the way to 80. Yeah. It just gives us a better opportunity. Good way of putting it. Yeah. OK. I, I, know, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking Domino's, aren't you, when you're saying that? Yeah, so Domino's <laughs> has been one of our no, best stocks. I it's know. been our best performing stock this year. I know it year. has been. I know it has been. I've had Don on the show and I, I, I knew he was doing a great job. But he still is defying gravity unbelievably, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. Um, well, the investment, our investment team just spent a couple of weeks in Europe yeah. and, and, that's the important and they crawled all them. over their operations in France yeah. and it was fascinating. Yeah. Um, uh, I had no idea until they came back you mean, and told so you me You guys that had a tax deductible trip absolutely. in France looking at absolutely. Domino's Pizza. Yeah, yeah, they had to go to the States too. Terrible, <laughs> okay. wasn't it? Yeah. But, but I had no idea that KFC and McDonald's, that's their most profitable operations, are in France. Yeah. Everything works for them over there. Yeah, you know, yeah. the access to vegetables, the mm. national advertising program, the, all of that sort of stuff really works for them well. Mm. And it looks like Domino's is going down the same path. Yeah. I mean, we I, actually tasted their pizzas over there. You know, they're inedible in France. I don't know. <laughs> just, the, the team the, just said they sat down to eat. Better the, here. The, yeah, better here. But they're, but they're tweaked to the French, French palate. Part, yeah. And we don't have French palate. I've got to say, when I, was, when I was in the south of France, I went into a McDonald's just to see how it worked in France. Yeah. And they actually have a grand Big Mac. I took a photograph of it. <laughs> I, sure. I didn't need it, of course. But, but it, it, the thing is this. So, you, so you're confident, because yeah. you've been a, a big Domino's supporter. Yeah. You, you We've I, gained more confidence. You, I didn't after. see one Domino's when I was in... in no. But of course, they're not going to be in the, the middle of no. Paris, where it's expensive. So they've got, they've got 400 stores they can go to 1350 they say we think they can go further than that yeah. and then they can okay. do the same thing in Japan mm. so it's all about okay. Im improving the technology we'll trust you on, on dominoes but let's just talk about uh, what you're seeing like we, for example on the weekend the S&P 500 hit its 200 day moving average mm. are you kind of thinking maybe this week could be a, a bit of a, a negative week for the Yanks Peter we never think about week to week Truly, we don't. Okay, fine. We're, we're really tell, us, tell us why. Well, we keep the five-year view. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you descend into week-by-week -week analysis, mm. you'll trip yourself up in noise. You're a trader then, too, aren't you? Then? Yeah. yeah. No, we, we just look at the opportunity. So there have been some opportunities. This, this correction has given us the opportunity to add to some of the stocks that we, that we like, yeah. and we've done so. Domino's is one of those, yeah. as an example. Well, Seek is a company yep. you've been... And a lot of my yep. viewers have asked me what I think is going to happen to Seek. So it's our second best-performing stock over the last year. And, and it's, it's, a, it's a much better buying proposition yeah. today than it was two months ago. Yeah, yeah. So in that risk-off situation, mm -hmm. a lot of the high PE stocks like Seek and REA and car sales get marked down quite quickly. Yep. And we just see that as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. And this time is... You no like all those three companies yeah. still? Nothing's yeah. changed? No, we like them even more. We, we, REA, we visited all the international competitors. We went and saw Zillow, we went and saw uh, Rightmove, Zoopla. And um, what's come out of that is we're even more confident that the REA model's a good one. Mm. It's actually superior to most of those models around the world. There was a time, time you know, over the last 12 months where there was a bit of tension between real estate agents and REA. I'm sure you're aware of yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Have they sorted that out? I think it's buried, absolutely buried. Mm. Agents are on in the selling season. They're using REA. Uh, wholeheartedly mm. and uh, we let's see two months ago we went around and saw about 30 agents mm. and the uh, evidence is overwhelming it was just market beat up mm. okay market beat up all right so um, what about um, 
Are there any new stocks that you've put on the screen? Like yeah. We've talked about stocks that you've often been in, they're more valuable. Well, there's, there's one that we've been building over time, which is Vita, which is a float. It, 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 That's it, the old... Um, Bay Corp Advantage, yeah, yeah, yeah. which we owned in 2001, 2002. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's an amazing business. We've known it for a long time. Yeah. I think the market's it's slowly still looking getting good. to know... Yeah. So it's beaten its prospectus. And uh, a lot of people don't understand the value mm -hmm. of uh, that whole credit checking regime and what it's going to do to pricing of credit in Australia. It's in its early stages. Because yeah. now, it, it's, is it positive reporting yes, now? Yes, it's coming. And it used to be negative reporting. Yes. And the banks are going to really use it. They're going to be able to understand your whole credit position. Moreover, you'll be able to go and get your credit score. You can already get it. You can get it online in about 10 seconds it takes. So yeah. I did it this afternoon just to check what mine was. Yeah. And Were you impressed? Yeah, it was a good credit score. I think okay. I might borrow some money. Okay. Um, but the bottom line is you can go to your bank and argue for a better deal in the future. Mm. And that's powerful. Yeah, most That's definitely. very powerful. And so, so A is going to be better for borrowers but, and lenders. But, but the, the snapshot that the banks get is going to be a better snapshot. It, it's going to be better for all parties. Unless you're a bad payer, mm. then it's not such a good deal for you. Okay. Any others that you like right um, now? You know, nothing that really stands out. Um, this has been an interesting period. We went through a period Any with... Any dollar-sensitive businesses that oh, yes. as a consequence of, of the lower yeah, dollar? Yeah, yeah. Look, Iris is one because, I mean... That's the, that's the finance um, yeah, although, software business? Yeah, so it, it, it prices its screens, which is about 60% of its business, in Australian dollars, and most of its competitors like Bloomberg and Factset and, uh, and, and the like price in US dollars. Mm -hmm. But what we like a lot about that business, and we visited them in the UK, is that they are moving their business towards a more wealth management style, so an X-Plan, which is the financial planning software. Yep. Um, what we like about that is it's a much more distributed consumer base. I mean, you're not just exposed to brokers, and actually you'd understand that yeah. that's a bit scary if you've got most of your 60% of your business just yeah. with brokers. Yeah. So we like that, and we like what they've done internationally, and we also like their exposure to the Australian how dollar. Long they, how long have they been overseas? A couple of years. Yeah, not long. Mm. You like the oh, well, actually, no, 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 I'm just talking about UK. Longer in uh, North America. Okay. So they've been in Canada for a while. Okay. A lot of people ask us about Telstra. You don't mm. hold Telstra, do you? No. no. Um, what's your view on Telstra? Um, okay, I'll make a complete comparison here. So when we bought REA in 2009, the yield on the stock was uh, about 1.5%. And at today's prices, and, uh, sorry, at today's uh, um, dividend, that's about 10% yield. Mm. Um, Telstra, if you'd bought it that many years ago, the yield was about 8%. Today, the yield is 8%. Mm. It's priced like a bond, and it's not a bond. Mm. It's a company, and you own equity in it, and it's risky. Mm. Full stop. Full stop. <laughs> but given that, are you, are you saying that... It's a no-growth company. It's a no-growth company. It's had compound annual growth rate of 1% over the last six years. Yeah. That's, that's not the sort of company we'd ever hold. Yeah. It's got all the risks and no upside. Mm. And, and you can talk about all the cash you like. Yeah. At the bottom line, there's no growth in it. But also, wouldn't, the, wouldn't Telstra come out and say, well, but they are the market leader. Their rivals don't look very good. So that, that helps reduce the risk of, of the business. We view the, that they've got everything to lose, mm. not everything to gain. They've mm. probably got as monopolistic as they, they, they possibly can get. Yeah. It's all downhill in our view for a yeah. company like Telstra. But I mean, we don't follow it yeah. because we don't own it. Yeah. So I, I know about as much of it as you know, just the general yeah. market yeah. participant. Yeah. But yeah. That's, they're the reasons we don't own it. Okay. And, and, and what about a, a company like Woolworths, n now down to $33 yeah. or so? No, we do own Woolworths. Yeah. We think it's the sort of safe, predictable growth business that is sort of the cornerstone of an in It's a, fa a foundation to yeah. in your portfolio. Yeah, yeah. It's is very that, predictable business. Have you, have you made an assessment of how the Masters thing might play out against Bunnings, which is clearly a, a very yeah, good operation? Yeah, yeah. And we liked Bunnings years ago. Yep. We owned West Farmers. We, we, other reasons we sold West Farmers, because of the risk of the whole Coles acquisition. Yeah. But um, look, we do do that. But the reality is, is that uh, the major part of their business is not the Masters part. We're really looking at the core of their business as the reason we own it. Yeah. If Masters actually got too large and too complex, that'd be a good reason to sell it. I guess if they can turn into a Dan Murphy's, Woolworths people would be laughing. Yes, well, that wouldn't be good. That would be good, wouldn't it? OK, Tim, thanks for joining us. It's always a pleasure. Same here, Matt. Coming up, why is Wilson Asset Management holding 50% cash? We'll find out after the break.